can't get it to our heads or the, near the top. Last time, sport enjoyed by both girls and boys of all ages. Across six annual tournaments, we bring together the game's finest young talent in a celebration of bright futures, big scores, and bigger smiles. We are proud to introduce the new generation of bowling with Season 10 of Candle Pin for Kids. To see old episodes and for more information, go to www.cp4k.com. Greetings from Park Place Lanes in Wyndham, New Hampshire. Candlepin for Kids, last qualifying stop of the season. Alongside Dan Gothier, I'm Rob Taylor. 11 and unders, we saw some big scores, and we're going to see who can make the Tournament of Champions. Yeah, we did, Rob. We saw some awesome scores today. We have some new bowlers in this one. I'm excited. Oh, we've got the orange pin right out for the first box, so that's going to be some real excitement. So, chance to meet some new faces, so let's do that right now. With one of the best bowling names we've seen in a long time, this youngster from Maine teams up with a young gentleman that goes by the nickname Baconator, and he hopes to devour those pins. I don't know what that means, but this is Lane Charlton and Chris Pelletier. Challenging them, a Bogey Lane's native back for revenge after being the runner-up at our last event joins a Central Park veteran who comes from a family of Candlepin for Kids champions. It's Marissa Bowden and Ronnie DiBiasio. And away we go, Lane Charlton on lane 27. Go get him, Lane. And she's shooting at the orange pin, so if she can get a strike, she'll be entered into our bowling ball raffle, which is sponsored by Paramount Industries. At her side is Marissa Bowden, who fell at our last stop to the dream team of Michaela Tortolot and Nate Fontaine. Marissa tossed a 99 game at that stop. And she's off and running again this time with an early spare. Marissa was tied for second place today, right, Rob? She had to bowl a one-string roll-off? She did. She faced Courtney Flood in a one-string roll-off. She was on fire in that roll-off, throwing a 120-something. So no surprise, she keeps it going with a spare right she, out of the gate. She's staying hot. And then Lane Charlton next to her. This is Lane's first candle pin for kids stop of her career. She came down from Big 20 in Maine. And Shannon, she did her center proud. Shannon Scribner said she's her protege. Yeah, they were on the same lane today. Both made the show. Scribner threw a 395, which was remarkable. Lane tossed a 295, which was just three pins off from her high triple. And now she's looking at a spare chance. Lane a little to the left. Marissa as well. Both looking for the outs here. And in this match, not only will the teams be trying to win the match, but they will be shooting for a target score of 214. That was tossed by Michaela Tortolot and Nate Fontaine at our last stop. Of course, we take the top three, the three winners from the season advance to the Tournament of Champions. Whoever has the first seed and the highest score gets a bye in the first round. And being at Park Place, a house that a lot of people consider faster, there's a chance to put that big score up and get that number one seed. There is. Marissa's doing her part, too, with a mark right out of the gate. And a good fill. Both of our ladies trying to home in on that head pin. Lane listed her proudest bowling accomplishment as getting first place on Candlepin for Kids. Nice bid by Marissa, and she picks it up. Great shot by Bowden. She's having a career day today so far. She had a great qualifying score, a wonderful one-string roll-off score, and now she's continuing it. And she bowled fantastically on our first stop of the season. She had three marks in that 99 string. Unfortunately, had a one fill and a five box at the end that kept her from getting into triple digits. She just went up against a buzzsaw on Michaela Tortolot that day. But maybe she'll have a shot at revenge with a win here. And Ronnie gets the 10. So now Chris racing through here. Ronnie's going to get a ball in as Billy slows him down. <laughs> Might be tough for Chris, who's not really used to bowling box by box. 
having to settle back in. Tough for everybody coming on the show the first time. There's a specific format we ask them to bowl in. They'll get a chance to think about it a little as we go to commercial, though. When we come back, we'll have the Smoke the Shoe segment, and I'll be bowling with little Jesse Escobedo. Well pronounced. Or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you nailed it. You nailed it. We'll see if we can keep the ball under 10 feet high. <laughs> Nice out by Ronnie. So going into the break, Marissa Bowden built up a big lead. We'll see if they can chip into it. Come back for Smoke the Shoe. Hi, I'm Dan Shugothier. Welcome back to Candle Food for Kids, my favorite segment. Your favorite segment too, Smoke the Shoe? Yes. It's your first time bowling with us, right, Jesse? Uh-huh. Anybody call you Jesse James? Yes, my friend Aiden. All right, now I'm calling you too, because you're going to go in and you're going to attack these pins. You're going to shoot them all down, right? Well. Uh you know how this works. You go up there, you beat me, you get some more gift cards. Uh, we'll give you a $20 mall card if you can get a strike. Do you think you can do that? I think so. All right, I'm going to go first. You're going to go second. Good luck, my friends. And my friend Chris Pelletier is going to co-commentate this box with me. So Chris, Shoe versus Jesse, who do you like in this one? Um, I'm going to actually go with Shoe because... Picking the favorite. Um, because... He's been practicing, I've seen him practice a lot beforehand, and he's been throwing some really good balls. So. Isn't it a shame that you think that she's got to do all this training to take down Jesse? Jesse with a nice little first ball there. Have any advice for Jesse, do you think, up there? Um, really just to stay calm and just stay, stay focused. Jesse with an opening here. And he's putting it on that head pin. He's all over it. Almost carries it. So now Shu is going to need to find a way to get four of these pins. Jesse is lighting the crowd on fire. Shu goes right. Jesse has smoked the shoe as he tosses the victory ball. The crowd is yelling to finish him, and he's all over it. Jesse has smoked the shoe. Join us after the break for more exciting action. Awesome bowling by Jesse. Thank you for joining me, Chris. No problem. And welcome back. Marissa Bowden on lane 27. Go get him, Marissa. She is filling a spare and setting the pace right now. 57 and a ball half. That makes it 63. Oh, uh, another six fill for her. She's throwing six fills. Lane looking to mount a comeback, though, with a hammer out of the gates. <laughs> Lane Charles, Marissa looking to answer. What a shot by Bowden. Fireworks out of the gates here. Arm pump for Marissa Bowden. These kids are showing the adult fuse boss today, huh, Rob? Darn right, our division one is the best out there. Lane a little ahead of the game. She's all over that head, been looking for the double. That was close to it. She would have got bowling ball raffle tickets for that. You're absolutely right. Marissa with another spare leave, just chipping away. Same with Marissa. She's trying. She gets this mark right here. That's three in a row, and she'll get a bowling ball raffle ticket. It's got if a she chance, does it, Rob. I think it's safe to say we've made it too easy for him. Will it cover? Lane looking to home in on that single. Just missed. Both girls just barely missing their spares. Marissa a little off there, so Lane's going to get a few back on this one. All over that 10. Nice single pin pickup there by Lane. And a reminder for the folks at home, the target score is 214. Right now, Marissa is certainly on pace for that. And if Bo Lane yeah. and Pelletier can mount a comeback, they'd be in great shape for it, Bo too. Boom DiBiase definitely making a run at that top score. Oh. The yeah. other member of that tournament of champions is Sage Johnson and Cole Fry. They tossed a 210 in their first stop of the year, and right now we are looking at a loaded Division One. It is, I think it is the most talent pound for pound in Division One right now. What a bid by Lane! That seven pin came off the wall and nearly caught the four, and she was looking at a shot at that spread eagle. We didn't see the Fontaines today, Rob. Had they come, I wouldn't have been at all shocked to see Nathan somehow qualify in the middle age. Good had a chance. Lane picking up her 10, so she's chipping away. It's a 17 pin difference right now. Chris Pelletier is a heck of a bull. If she can get this down to right around that 10 mark, which we're always talking about, they would certainly have a shot. Bowden just off. We've had several matches this year, Rob, where the ladies have dominated the boys, and this is another one here. In this age group, they've taken them the entire way. I think every single, I'm looking at the sheets, Nate Fontaine was the only one to score 
better than his female counterpart when he tossed a 111 and Michaela tossed a 103. But other than that, the girl has scored higher than the boy in this age group all year. They do say... Lane makes a pretty shot. That's exactly what the doctor ordered. They say the girls are ahead of the boys in development up till around age 12, so they get a little bigger, taller. A little bit, yeah, stronger. That a factor. So Lane is excitable. They slow her down, <laughs> which was good because she had a pin knocked down. Scared of her, maybe. So now Marissa. Wait, Lane having a great second half right now, Rob. Looking up there what she's got. Marissa carries the extra pin and gets some friendly big, wood. Big, that big gone much better right than that. There. Marissa looking for the highest single in this age group all year. That was done with the 113 by Sage Johnson. And now oh, we have an orange pin for orange Lane. Pin. So as if the stakes weren't high enough already, Lane's just off. Tough to fill. Marissa's going high and just sneaks to the right of it. Held on a little longer on that ball than she usually does. And out, very important here for Lane. Let's see if she can sneak two more. So a strong 111 game by Marissa Bowden. Marissa Bowden's mom's such a good bowler too. She bowls in our uh, Monday league. Runs in the family. Oh, it does. You can see she takes after her mom a lot. Very good ball. And a 102 by Lane Charlton. Her average is 85. So that she goes 17 over. Marissa goes 24 there's over. nothing wrong with a 102 game from the girls out of this age group. A very superior game. And so now the difference is 14 for Chris Pelletier to try to chip away at. Like you said, not unsurmountable by any means. Chris can get hot as well. 121 high single for Chris Pelletier. Ronnie's 116. Chris was just a little off that head pin in the first half. If he could get on that, I think he'd see some good leaves. It is easy to be off that head pin here, Rob. I can tell you from experience. You can be just an inch off, and you might not, never get a good leave. Especially when you only have one string to try to find it. Chris finds it and picks up the spare. Great shot by Pelletier. Bows at the pins afterwards. Ah, I don't know what that one is, Rob. I think all the kids are trying to outdo each other with their little dances now. Look at I you blame eat it French on Ray fries. Lewis. You're like Terry Francona over here. Try it. Unbelievable. All professionalism on this show. We're all about it. How fast good, can though? Don Orsillo eat a hot dog? <laughs> See if you can beat him. One Rob, commercial, break. commercial break. I'm saving until between. So the lead down to, I believe, 12, minus this ball by Pelletier. Pelletier gets some nice action off the head pin. Ronnie did too. So it's single digits now and both looking at spare leaves. Yeah, but it's now officially a one mark game. You can tell Chris is itching to throw each ball. Ronnie on it and picks it up. Great shot by DiBiasio. Pelletier veers left there. So nice job answering by Ronnie. Every pin important. Chris picks one of them up. And Chris has his nickname listed as the Baconator. <laughs> Sounds like Looks like what you're eating, Dan. <laughs> he sounds delicious, Rob. <laughs> so now Ronnie on the fill. Off the head pin. Carries a bunch. Seven. Make it eight. A strong eight with good wood, too. Pelletier gets a little excited. He just makes cut a pretty the ten shot, into though. the nine. Man. How often do you see that? So now Ronnie with a shot. Oh, look at disappointment on Ronnie's face there. He thought had he should have had a chance to kind of put this one out of reach. It's still going to be tough. Different 16, so out's important here. <laughs> Alan gets away from him, so the Pelletier with a chance to catch up a bit. Baconator's going to want a big out. No, settle for six. So two boxes left. <laughs> Difference of 18. Two big marks, still within two. Almost got to start looking at... Maybe not double strike, but you got to be close. Well, in this age group, too, your opponent can throw a bad box and let Always you Always true. Well, Chris has the orange pin, so if he could get himself in that raffle, he would get things close. Chris just off that head pin. He's up to eight and counting. All he's got to do is hit that head pin. Maybe even not. If he's a little right, that wood will probably swing back. And Ronnie says. A little uh -oh. off. So now, opportunity for Chris. He's just to the left of it. Yeah, yeah. So now he will need to <laughs> double strike. A lot of frustration shown right there. <laughs> I know. 
We'll see what the out is for Ronnie. He gets six. Chris finds that head pin. Chris wants. So he'll need this. a mark at least. You can tell Chris he is a very this. intense bowler. He oh, always. Yeah. And he's told me in the interviews that sometimes he always has to focus on staying calm because it's the sort of thing that if he gets too excited, then sometimes uh, balls like get away, as they do with anybody. Yeah. So you know he's focusing on it. Would love to throw a good first ball here. Ronnie is going to force Chris to double. It's a great first ball by Ronnie. I think if you're Ronnie, I think you go for that wood on the right of the five and hope you can bounce your ball across the lane. Chris needing a strike to stay alive. He's off. So now we look at that target score. If Ronnie marks, they're going to have a shot at it. Let's see if he goes for the wood, Rob. <laughs> Tries to cut it clean. Cut it clean. A heck of a try. So our first round match is set as Chris makes a nice run at that 10-pin. It's going to be Sage Johnson and Cole Fry versus Marissa Bowden and Ronnie DiBiasio. That's going to be a heck of a matchup. That'll be a fun one. 93 finish for DiBiasio. Pelletier gets no luck at the end as well. Some great bowling by our youngsters. Come back and see if any of them can hit the high-low jack. High-low jack time. Marissa Bowden ready to take a chance at it. She has a good ball for it. She was one of the only two kids who did not make it last time. Trying to this time. Goes That's a little right. I like the way her ball has that little tail, and if she hits the right side of the headpin with that ball, and the ball's already going right, she's got a good chance of making it. Looking to still add some bucks to her gift card just off. It's going to be impressive when she makes it for a 10. Marissa's going to be on our show for the third time for these Nesson episodes, so she's becoming a veteran. And it seems like as she gets used to being under the lights, she's getting better every time. Nice try there by Marissa. So now it's Lane Charlton's turn. Now we'll get to see if the next rack has a high-low jack set up. Not quite sure if we expect it to or not. Dan, always faithful, always optimistic. And it doesn't. Lane just off. Chris Winniarts is going to run down after Lane finishes her box and knock them running down. What's up? Leave it recording, yeah. And so now Lane going to make a play for a Big Ten. Hey, if she doesn't hit anything, we may not even have to reset that lane. That's true. That'd be nice. And lane a little off. Don't Leave it lane. And so now Chris is going to run down and take him out. Ronnie DiBiasio can step up. And you are watching our cameraman, Chris Winniarts. The man behind camera one. He's been at all our stops this year. Big Scott Pilgrim fan. Lover of movies. We could be a pancake if we hit the button on him right now. And so now, I don't know what that joke was. But <laughs> yes, you know, could. Squish him down like no, a pancake. No, I gotcha. So Ryan DiBiasio now making a attempt on an iconic shot. Just off that head pin. Not quite the same magic we had last time. Not yet. Not yet. Long way to go. It's going to be off to Chris to Pelletier at the end. I think he'll put one on the head pin. Ronnie is proudest of his throwing a double strike when he was just six years old. Oh, that's pretty cool. They get started early in that DiBiaseo family. We almost saw a four-year-old do it at our last roll-off. Um, it's true. And a little off. So now Chris Pelletier's turn. I think we'd see quite the body English if Chris were to get this. Oh, yeah. I think it's, it's it worth watching for just for that. Might make up for his disappointment if he makes this. Chris did bowl over his average in that match. He's just off it. I thought he was going to hit it. We had a bad angle. It looked like he was going to be right on it. Looked like he was on it. Chris was actually just under his average. His average 91. He tossed an 88. Had a little bit of trouble homing in on that head pin. He's a guy who's got a lot of potential, I think, moving forward into the older age groups. God, every one of these 11 and unders that we have has so much potential. Chris unable to make the shot. We will talk with him and the rest of them after the break. With the big scores we were seeing at Park Place Lanes, the pins looked lost. So we asked our kids for some tips on how they were knocking them all down. I'm not really used to bowling on these lanes, so it's new. But I came up with a technique. I just, like, throw it down the middle. Just take your time and don't try to rush things like I need to try to do. The pins are stiff. So if you have a curve, it's an advantage. If you're a straight ball thrower, it's less of an advantage. 
feel like I'm getting lucky. What I was trying to do is that I kind of examined the wood and see where would it hit it, so that's why I'll get all the pins down. And what I'll do is that, especially on those shots, I'll take my time a lot just to calm down, focus, and then I would throw the ball. Keep falling hard and you'll be just like me. Welcome back on Candlepin for Kids. Dan is with our runners up. Thank you, Rob. I'm here with Lane and Chris. Uh, let me start with Lane. Lane, first time bowling with us today on Candlepin for Kids? Yes. You came all the way down from Big 20. How, how long of a ride was that for you to get here today? Um, like a couple hours. Was it worth it? Yes. Did you have a good time on your first one? Yes. Now, uh, you came down with Shannon Scribner, I believe. She was telling me that you're her protege. Are you two good friends down there, and do you learn a lot of what you know from bowling from her? Yeah, me and uh, Shannon are on a bowling team together. Nice, nice. And is it a youth team, or is it sort of a mix adult youth team? Youth team. Are you going to come back and try out for our team event that we have coming up in March? Yes. Awesome. It'll be great to see you again. You bowl good. And talk about another bowl with an interesting name. Now, Lane is her actual name, which is funny because we bowl on lanes. But you've got an interesting nickname. You want to tell our folks at home what your nickname is? Baconator. Now, how'd you get that? Um, well, when I was, when last year, I was, I loved bacon. So what I did is that since my initials, Who doesn't? And my initials are CP, so I said, how about crispy bacon? And then, um... And then um, somebody decided, I'm like, how about instead of crispy bacon, how about the Baconator? And I'm like, yes. Sounds good. Now, you didn't quite have the chance to really show off that nickname today. No big hammers up there. But you came close on a lot of shots, huh? Yeah. Just what were you thinking? Just, just barely off the head pin on a few? Uh, yeah. My ball wasn't coming off my hand like I, like I wanted. Not like, not like in the first string. Yeah, it make all the difference if you're just off the head pin by an inch. Sometimes that's enough, huh? Right. You gonna come back for the team's event as well? Um, I I don't really know because I I want to, but I don't know if I can. Like. What would our team event be without you? You gotta make it. You're working on your parents in the meantime, right? Right. All right. We're gonna let Rob talk to the champs now. But congratulations today on a great day of bowling, Rob. Thank you, Dan. I've got Marissa Bowden and Ronnie DiBiasio here. We'll start with you, Marissa came just short last time. Today you came out of the gates. It looked like you were on a mission. What was going on up there? I don't know. I just felt confident. Was it any different this time? How was it different this time? I don't know. I just felt better because I knew what I was in for because I didn't know what I was doing last time. And it showed on the lanes four marks for you. You came out of the gate so strong. What was going through your head in that first half? I felt really good that I was like probably going to win. You just kept it going the whole way, so now you could get a chance to get a rematch against Nate and Michaela. Is that something that would be pretty cool for you? Yes. How do you think a second chance would go for you? How do you envision that match being? Pretty good. Do you, do you have any words you'd like to say to, to Michaela or Nate? No. No? You'll just talk to him at your home lanes when you have the bowling link. Well, congratulations to you, Ronnie. You've been with us for plenty of years. This is your first time on the show in a while. When was the last time you were on our show? I think it was two or three years ago. So how is this time different from that last time? Uh, I've grown, I've gotten stronger, and I've gotten better. Clearly you've gotten better, and that definitely helped you. Your ball was working pretty well today. I don't think you did, you did pretty well in that game. Do you think you could have done a little better? Yeah, I could have made some shots here and there. Are you going to save it for the Tournament of Champions, you think? I'm, pre I'm pretty sure. Now you'll be the lone DiBiasio representative this year. You think you're going to have the whole family cheering for you? Um, I might have my sister because she's playing later on. That's right. I'm completely wrong. So are you going to be sticking around to root for her? Yeah. What, what's your take on that match? How has she been bowling lately? She's been bowling good. Do you have an inside scoop on Justine that you can give us for a match preview? Um, well, she can hit a lot of shots. That's pretty much it. Well, it's going to be fun to watch you guys in the Tournament of Champions. Congratulations. You've got $50 gift cards. Awesome bowling out there today. I can't wait to see these two in our Tournament of Champions. I can't either, Rob. And I was thinking, we, we've talked before today, and we've talked how whoever won this age group today would have a hard time because we have two really solid teams already in there in this age group, probably the most talent we've ever seen in the 11 and unders. And i got to admit, before today, I didn't think the winner of today's match was really going to have a good chance. And now after seeing these two bowl, and I know that Marissa was the subject of one of my blog entries I made a couple weeks ago where I said she's really good. I don't even know if she knows how good she is yet. Now that I see these two bowl together, 
I think they got a shot, and it's going to be really fun watching those matches in the 11 and under division on Nesson. They've got a fair bit of experience, and that's going to be taking it against Sage Johnson and Cole Fry in the semifinals, with the winner advancing on to face Michaela Tortolot and Nate Fontaine. They're all going to be fun matches, so we hope you watch them, and we hope you watch our next match. We'll be going to the 12 to 14 age group. You can see if Ronnie's sister can do what he just did. So, on behalf of the entire Candlepin for Kids staff, thank you for joining us at Park Place Lanes alongside Dan Gothier. I'm Rob Taylor. Thanks for watching, everybody. Last chance to get on Nesson this year. Does that raise the stakes any for you? Yes, it does. Especially for the last game. I'm going to throw a big one. Quote me on that. Now, uh, you said you have a dog, right? Yeah. What's your dog's name? Naya. Naya? Tell me about Naya. Well, we went to New Hampshire for the, well, bowling tournament.